Hi everybody, it's Robbie from Southern California and you know I wasn't going to do a vlog today but I'm going to vlog. I'm going to vlog on hummingbirds which you could probably see behind me. Let me see if I can get you to see them. And um, a topic that a lot of people have asked me is they know I do a lot of DIYs for hummingbirds. All the feeders behind me are DIY feeders. Can you see them? I hope you can see them because the sun is so bright today. Well, let's see. You've been asking me for swings. Oh, make a swing. Oh, by the way, that's my GoPro that I've got there. And what I'm doing here, you can probably just see it here, is I was getting some clips on a brand new hummingbird feeder I just made and it's working fantastic. It's too early to actually launch this video on the hummingbird feeder because nobody's got any hummingbird feed. Hum hummingbirds right now, we have hummingbirds, but a lot of you won't have hummingbirds back until they'll start coming back in March, depending on where you are. So I've been experimenting and I came up with a feeder that I happen to really like and it's made out of another food container and it's, you'll see the ice cream containers back there, but I've got another food container. But that's not what I want to talk about today. What I want to talk about today is why I haven't done a video on hummingbird swings yet. I'm going to tell you, I make the cutest, easiest, cheapest hummingbird swing there is. I, I'm going to go ahead and get a video together on the swing that I make because a lot of you may want to make a swing. But the reason I don't like swings is it depends on where you put them. A swing, like I've got some holders back there, become a throne for certain species of hummingbirds. Not all, but let's talk about the Rufus, who decided that he wanted this entire table behind me. So while I was trying to do a video clip to show how quick, it took less than 15 seconds. I'll actually have to look at the video. I haven't even looked at it. I, when I made it, I put it out and by 15 seconds, I already had a hummingbird feeding out of it, and then a whole bunch of them came. But what happened was the Rufus came, and he decided to park himself up on the branch, and there's a holder there for another little, um, the little dots I make. He parked himself there, and he started chasing everybody off. Everybody. He didn't want anybody around. And when I came out here and sat here, everybody came back. And that's something I'll talk about. He decided he wanted all the feeders behind me. So it was so much for trying to get a video. I thought, you know, this is a good time to sit down, grab my cell phone and do a little vlog on hummingbirds. I don't like creating a place where a hummingbird can just sit and decide that it's his throne and everything around it is his. And that's the reason I'm not real big on swings, yet they'll do it in the perch. So it doesn't really matter. You know, they'll find a perch and they'll do the same thing. See, they are feeding over there. As soon as I move my, they don't know what I'm doing. I moved the camera. They take off, they went around the corner now to the other feeders that are on my kitchen, other kitchen window. So he was sitting there chasing everybody off. And when I came out here, he left. The reason he left is we've got the Annas and the Black Chins. The Costas are just barely around and we've got the Allens and they're really fairly tame, especially the Annas. They'll come right up to me and the Black Chins and they'll look you right in the face. They'll kind of buzz around me to see if I've got something for them to check out. And so they don't mind me out here. The Rufus doesn't, they're not as tame usually. So he took off into the tree and it allowed the other ones to come in feed now. So that's why I'm not big on swings. I'll get something together because I think you're going to get a kick out of the swing I make. It's like kids will love making it. Everybody's going to love making it. So easy, so fun, and it can easily be made to your environment, to your yard, to your deck, to wherever, and any size. It's so fun. I'll get that out soon. Right now I was working on that. But this is the why I, this is the reason I wasn't pushing swings because if I hang a swing right next to the hummingbird feeders and a rufus comes around, well he decides that oh that looks great. Look, they sent me a perch up. I can sit here and I can dive bomb everybody and I can get everybody out. So that's why I'm not big on the swings. But the the thing is the swings create a perch for them to sit on and then watch over the feeders. I do put a swing out and as long as there is not a Rufus who becomes dominant, they're not all dominant, 
but it tends to mostly be the rufous. Not always, any species can do it, but they're the ones that are notorious for that. I'm gonna let you see if you can see. They are absolutely notorious for becoming uh, very territorial. And they may only do it for a day, and they could do it for as long as they hang around or until they find something better. The reason they're all fighting over food is, you probably can see, the hillsides have been cleared. A lot of it is due to law. You have to get the weeds out. But the other part is, it's the time of the year. A lot of the weeds are no longer growing and they've dried out, so they've cleared them all. And the new growth hasn't really started yet because we really haven't gotten any rain to speak of. So until we get rain, we won't get new growth and then there won't be any flowers. And as far as the citrus trees, we've got citrus trees that you probably can just make out down here. The citrus trees right now are in their second fruit. So they still have a lot of fruit that's almost a year old from last year. And that's still hanging on the tree. And then they already went to flower and now they've got the teeny fruit. So they're not flowering. So there's no real flowers on any of the citrus trees. Of course, we all know our vegetable gardens are dying back and we're not getting flowers. We're growing mainly green type of foods like cabbage and collard and broccoli and kale. And that creates flowers, but not really right now this time of the year. I've got a little bit on my dazzling blue kale. I've got some flowers, but not as much as I will have in the spring as the year goes on. Uh, garlic chives, they're all done flowering. Basil's throwing some flower, and I have seen the hummingbirds go to the basil. I wanna make sure you can see the hummingbird feeders. So there's not as many flowers, and my hibiscus have flowers. Got a lot of my geraniums have flowers, but there's not a lot of pollen in there. So they're really depending on the ones that are hanging around here, the hummingbird feeder. And again, a lot of you say, oh, you're gonna make them diabetic, it's no good for them. They absolutely need the sucrose. If they don't find enough, they'll perish or they'll leave looking and in the meantime if they don't find it by you know sundown they won't make it so they really do need our help and please remember remember they're not just living on just solely the sugar water we're making which is a quarter a cup of white granulated sugar to one cup of water they don't live on that they're going into the flowers like for instance geraniums don't have a lot of nectar or pollen but what they're looking around in there is possibly little insects, little insects that hide in the flower. So they're picking up little insects. They're looking around spider webs to see if there's insects. They depend on insects as well. So they have to eat insects, pollen and nectar, and that's pretty much it because that's where they're getting their protein, a lot of vitamins out of the uh, insects they're finding. So what I'm doing is helping them out. Some of them will continue to go on down south and go into Mexico and Central America and a lot of them will park themselves here stay here and then of course we have hundreds and thousands that live here all year they don't go anywhere so that's it so that's my hummingbird feeder but that's why I haven't done anything on swings because I really wasn't real big on swings but now that I've come up with this design that is so easy and so fun to make I feel that yeah maybe I should get a swing one out I'll do a lot more on the feeders and the swings as the, you know, we get through the holidays and into the new year. And I thought it would just, I don't know if I see, I can't see on my phone. Oh, I can look down at my hero. No, they're not there right now. So a lot of them taken off. It also is different times of the day. Let's see, right now where I think we're about, I don't even know what time it is. I think we're about between 10 and 11 o'clock. I've been running around doing my thing. And right now they're into the garden. So they've come and they fed. They were up at close to five o'clock this morning, 5.30. I looked out the window and they were already starting to feed. It was still dark. So they were desperate. So they came to the window at that point. And that's the thing, they feed very early. And then what they'll do is now, as the day is really nice, they're gonna go into the gardens. They're gonna go, oh, not just here, they're gonna leave. They're gonna go miles and miles away. And they're gonna check out food and they'll come back and feed. Remember when you see a hummingbird, a lot of times you think it's the same one, but it's not. We had some pieds that came through here once and those are hummingbirds that have white all over them. And each one was specifically marked so we knew exactly what, you know, which bird was what. So it turned out that they were feeding every 15 minutes. So they were only feeding four times in an hour. And yet the feeders were full of birds. 
And that's how a lot of this is calculated as well as how much that they take in. And of course each hummingbird eats a little bit differently. So we have hummingbirds here all day and it may not be the same and you may not have the same one. So, and they, like I said, they'll go across the hill, they'll go across the canyon, they'll leave, they'll go miles away and then they'll come back. They know there's food here. So this is kind of their security blanket that if they can't find enough, they come back. Water, we have a lot of water fountains. I love my solar fountains. We'll get a lot into that. Solar fountains are important because they drink, you know, water too. And of course they need to bathe. That's basically it. So I just wanted to tell you, that's why I haven't done much on swings because I'm afraid that somebody will make a swing or you might make a swing and then say, wait a minute, all the hummingbirds left. But you can, you know, because where are they gonna sit? They're generally gonna sit in a swing that's near a feeder. You can stick it in a tree and if they've got a branch, they're probably gonna go to a branch before they go to the swing. But if you hang a swing around your feeders, like I can hang a swing behind me here. I've got one now in the kitchen window. They'll use it there because they're waiting, you know, to come back and get another drink if they know there's no other food for them. I'm gonna set up swings around different areas when it's for the rain because that is one thing they don't enjoy sitting in the rain yet they can the water will roll off of them but i have found i've strung christmas lights all over and the last rain we had which was what a week ago we had a little bit of rain they were all snug up in the christmas lights and so i figured you know what maybe i'll start getting swings around so this will give them some place to sit out of the rain and they don't have to go looking once they are used to the swings they have to get used to everything well generally like i said i put this hummingbird feeder out and you probably can see i'm feeding on a dot right now and they had that used in i couldn't believe it in less than 15 seconds but they really like their dots you can even make swings with dots and they really enjoy that and in case you're going to ask me you're going to ask what is that box behind you I can, I'm pointing at the camera and it's behind me. The box is an ice cream container. It's a gallon ice cream container and I cut it and I made a shelter so they can, if they want, some of them go in there. And if it was raining, I put it out for the rain last week. They can go inside of there and they won't get wet is what it was. But that, this keeps them from getting wet. They don't generally use it because that is just a little too small. I would need to make something bigger. And there's other ways I'm, I could make it. I'm thinking about making it so they can go in and feed out of the rain. We have a lot of ours set up. Well, when the rain comes in, I, I set up a lot of feeders around the eaves of the house. And this way, they're out of the rain. They can freely sit, enjoy a drink, and then go back to the trees. They do still like to sit in trees, and they do know how to sit in a tree. And that's, you know, they know where to sit and where the water's going to roll because trees are designed to have the water hit the top. And then generally, if you notice, you go under a tree, it's dry, but the perimeter all the way around the tree is wet because the tree is having the water go through leaf by leaf and it falls and it falls on the outside where the root system is because a lot of trees have their major feeding, you know, sucking up the water root system on the perimeter of where it runs off the tree. So they can get into the tree and they can still st stay dry. But if you have a really bad storm and it's really pouring and and it's just windy and stuff, then they'll look for other places if they don't want to go into the tree. Have you hear any hammering? I don't know if you can see it. I'm not sure. I'm sticking my head in there. But they're they're actually building that house up there. And don't worry. I know some of you said, "Oh, I'm going crazy." Nah, it's gonna be done soon. Like I, I've talked about in my other vlog, once the house is done and they're working on the inside, I won't hear them anymore. A lot of these new houses are so soundproof that I've heard things and called a neighbor and they'd say they didn't hear a thing. So the new ones are really solid and soundproof. So I won't hear them working. But those, those are the feeders and that was it. So if you've got a bird that's chasing everybody around, generally it is a rufus. I'm looking down at my, I can see my hero behind me because I can see better on my my tablet i can see better that way than trying to see through the camera because it's so sunny i just thought i'd say hello and talk about why i haven't done any swings but i'm gonna make a swing gonna get a video together early in the year and you're gonna go 
I know you're gonna go, oh my gosh, this is so fun. It, you, you will, you will, because I, I got excited. It just was like a light bulb. I was sitting the other day and I was thinking all these different swings I've made. And it's just like everybody else making a swing that you'd make for a parakeet or canary or something. And then I thought about, wow, you could do this and it looks so cool and anybody can do it and you can change it around. So you'll see, but that's it. So that's why I don't like swings. I'm trying to see, I don't think anybody's there yet. Oh yeah, see they're feeding. I'm gonna have to say, I don't know if you can see the ice cream container. That's their favorite. Isn't that funny? They actually prefer that than the regular hummingbird feeders. Oh, I just bought some hummingbird feeders. I bought some hummingbird feeders on eBay. I have bought them from uh, Walmart. I think I'm done with Dollar Tree and the 99 cent store, only because the ones I got last year they were out in the sun and they fell apart like really fast so I'm thinking the plastic was changed it's barely made the season so I'm going to stick with the ones from Walmart and I have called and talked to the company and they are making the same ones I bought on line at eBay is made from the same company but Walmart let me just move over came out with their own design and I don't like their design I didn't call Walmart it's not worth it they made the holes too small, so I have to go with my soldering iron, which I absolutely love my soldering iron, use it for everything. And I have to make the holes bigger because these hummingbirds will not use it. They stick their you know, be beautiful long beak in and then they jump back because I'm so afraid they're gonna get stuck because the slit is so small. So I absolutely make it bigger and their, their feeders are less than $4. But I went ahead and paid a little bit more, same company, but the holes are made correctly and they're bigger and this is the way the company actually prefers it so I went ahead and bought I think about four they should be here any day this week they're about double the money of what I pay from Walmart but I'm gonna have a mix of that because what I usually do is come the beginning of the year when all the spring stuff is coming in is my camera still working yes when all the spring stuff is coming in I used to go to the dollar stores and pick up a whole bunch of hummingbird feeders and I make my own stands there's nothing wrong with that you can still do that but this year I put them out and I have different areas I put them out and if they were out in the sun they would break and Gary would find them on the floor because the plastic that goes around the top it just became brittle and fell right off yet they look the same so the only thing that could be is they changed the plastic formula and it it's dissolving in the sun you can paint it but I'm not going to go to that trouble. But that would be an idea of get some non-toxic paint and paint over the plastic. And if you do that, then what you're doing is you're protecting the plastic from the UV of the sun. And then it will last a little longer. So see, now the hummingbirds are gone. I can see on my tablet, they're not behind me right now. There's a few around, but now they're out in the gardens. And that's what they do. Then they come in later on in the day. And they've been coming in earlier. So they used to come in just before the sun goes down, but now it seems like about three o'clock, they just start coming in by the hundreds and thousands and the trees are full all around me and they'll start feeding and I've got to make sure all the feeders are, oh, that's a little bark. I call it a bark. Some people call it a honk. Um, I do believe it's the Anna's doing that and they, it's kind of an attention getter for me and I think they're trying to get my attention sometimes. It's amazing the noise that hummingbirds can make and if you want to hear about that you can go watch my other video on that. So that was it. It was kind of like a hello and I'm having hummingbirds now zip by, by me on my face. I, let me see if I can turn you around if you can see in the window. Can you see him there? I've got to fill the other feeder. I see the one on the bottom. There's Oh that's my the red one here is a peanut butter cup. And you can watch the other videos on how I make the peanut butter cup uh, hummingbird feeders. They love those. They love the hummingbird feeders made out of peanut butter cups. And that's a Walmart one hanging there and I made the holes bigger there. See how peaceful they are? They're so peaceful when you don't have a little Rufus that decides that everything is his. The Rufus won't take over everything. What they're gonna take over is an area. So it's not like he's just trying to take over one one feeder on the table behind me. He's taking over that entire area. And that's why if you've got that problem, you're gonna have to split it. So they'll feed perfectly fine there and the Rufus won't go bother anybody over there. And what is that? Maybe 15, 20 feet. 
but this is his area. So they go by area. They're zipping around my head. They go by area. That's it. So I thought it's such a beautiful day. I'll come out here and say hello and talk about hummingbirds and make sure I have enough food. Oh, I've been ordering so much. I, I keep seeing, I buy everything from Walmart if possible or Sam's Club. Actually, the last batch was Sam's Club and it was curbside pickup because they had the CNH and I can get in 50 pound sacks. So Gary went to curbside pickup and they brought it to the car. So that worked out really good. Walmart has the CNH, but it's in 10 pound packages and that costs a whole lot more. So I figured I'll get to 50 pounds. Can you see him? He's behind me. No, he's zipping around. Yeah, he's zipping around. I got to get a feeder up there too. Isn't it nice just to sit out here? I don't mind the hammering. It doesn't bother me. They're up there working away. I, I guess it's called progress. But it doesn't bother me. It's peaceful. There's really very little blowers. I hear something in the background going. Nothing big. And that's it. Anyways, now I've talked too long. Just thought I'd sit with you outside. You'd get to see. I'll show, show you some of the footage I just did if I can get it off my tablet. And uh, like I said, we'll get more hummingbird feeders that you can make. And maybe I'll do it pretty soon because I want you to save certain jars to make really good hummingbird feeders. And then of course, if you want a cheap feeder, I would spend the extra money and go to Walmart. You can get it in your groceries or you can get it in the grocery store, um, in the grocery, in the Walmart itself, they carry them. They're less than $4. They sit quite a few hummingbirds. They've got a seat, they've got everything. Easy to clean, wide mouth. The only thing is if they won't feed from it, go back and look at one of my videos i showed how i made the holes bigger and it works absolutely perfect and if you want to spend even more then you can go i i can give the link i guess of where i bought mine from she's got a whole bunch they're really really good and it was really not that bad of a price i think there were six or seven dollars i bought a whole bunch and the more you buy the price goes down and it's got a white hole already they're not bee proof so if you're dealing with bees but who's dealing with a lot of bees this time of the year um, but it works perfect for the hummingbirds and that seems to be their favorite hummingbird feeder. Remember, you get too exotic, too fancy on feeders. A lot of times they won't even use the real fancy ones. I've had people contact me. They got this fancy, beautiful feeder and they won't use it. A lot of times they won't use it. Isn't that cool? I like having a table set up there. And then of course I can put it on the rails too. Silence. Have a great day and don't forget to eat what you grow. Bye-bye everybody.